Hey, what's up? It's Nathan here with thebtccourse.com. Now I've had several people ask me what hardware devices I recommend. And so that's what I'm going to try and address in this video. Now I use and recommend all four of the devices that I'm about to talk about. So we have the Treasure, we have Ledger, we have the Keystone device, and then also have a cold card. So again, I use, recommend all four. You honestly can't go wrong with any of these devices that I'm talking about here. So I just wanted to put that out there that, yeah. All, all four, I highly recommend. But anyway, in order to kind of rank them, I did give them some ratings uh, based off of my personal preferences. And I'll try and explain that during the video, why I rank one higher than the other and so on. So anyway, the cold card is my most highest ranked hardware wallet. And to caveat that, it is Bitcoin only. So you can't do any sort of altcoins on the cold card. So if you're trying to get a hardware wallet where you can do stuff with altcoins, don't get the cold card. Get one of these other wallets instead because, yeah, Bitcoin only on this device. But if you're doing Bitcoin only, this is, in my opinion, the best device you could possibly use. And again, I'll try and explain why during this video. All right, number two then is a Keystone device. So it's a very solid device and I'll explain why followed by the ledger, ledger device, and then we've got the treasure coming in fourth. But again, highly recommend all four, can't go wrong with any of them. All right, so the prices, so the treasure is the lower end model is 69, so it's the cheapest device. And uh, next one up is $219. Now personally, I don't think it's worth spending the $219 on the higher end model. I just don't see the features really, you know, being worth that cost, but maybe that's just me. I think the $69 model is perfectly acceptable and fine, and it's the one I actually use. All right, the Ledger comes in at $79, so just $10 more than the Treasure. And, you know, it's pretty much the same, same functionality between the two devices. Uh, they do have a $149 model as well, has a little bit more space, but I also don't think it's worth you know, the $149. I think the $69 model and the $79 models are perfectly fine and acceptable devices personally. All right, so then the Keystone device has two models. We have one that's $93 and one that's $132. Now I do recommend going with the $132 model because it comes with a rechargeable battery, which is nice. Also, it comes with a fingerprint scanner. So you can go ahead and scan your fingerprint to log into your device and you know it just saves time much better than entering a password and stuff like that so you know I, I do recommend the higher end model it's only 40 more dollars anyway and you know it i think it's worth it and then the cold car is 148 dollars so there's a mk3 as well but i don't and i don't know how much that one cost and the only one i've ever used is the mk4 which is what i have currently so yeah there's another model and it might be cheaper but yeah the mk4 is 148 all right, so then data transfer. So how these devices like can sign transactions. So the treasure is USB. So that means, you know, you have to plug it into your computer, which is not the most secure option in the world, but it is more secure than, you know, having your seed phrase on your computer. So if you have your seed phrase on your computer, then that's considered a hot wallet. If you have it plugged in with a USB cable, well, it's in cold storage and it's definitely more secure than having it as a hot wallet. But if you have it air gapped, which means that you don't plug it in at all, maybe you have a micro SD card that you take out of the device, plug it into your computer and so on. So you're not plugging your device into your computer. Well, that's the most safe and secure. And that's called air gap because there's you know a gap of air between your computer and the device that your Bitcoin is stored on. So anyway, yeah, the treasure is USB. The ledger is USB or Bluetooth. I've never used the Bluetooth settings before, but yeah, I guess on the $149 model, they do offer Bluetooth. So I don't, I don't again, don't know how that works, but it, maybe that's useful and helpful. The Keystone device is air gapped. So again, we're not plugging this thing into our computer. So it's another layer of security. And also it has a camera. So you can go ahead and scan QR codes in order to sign transactions and create transactions and stuff like that. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to, you know, get a little micro US or a micro SD card, plug it in, plug it into your computer, pull it back out, plug it back into your device to sign it. So it's a little bit easier to do than doing a micro SD card back and forth. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty cool. But if for whatever reason, the camera's not working or you don't have a camera on your computer, you can go ahead and use a micro SD card. So it has both of those functions, which is pretty nice. 
The cold card is air gapped, but it doesn't have to be. Like if you don't have a micro SD card, you could plug your cold card straight into your computer and use it as, no. Use that USB cable to send the data back and forth to sign transactions and all that type of stuff. But to keep it air gapped, you do need to use micro SD. And it doesn't have a camera, but it does have NFC. So if you have an NFC device, you could go ahead and drop your cold card on it and it would go ahead and register that transaction. So similar to how Apple Pay or those tap to pay credit cards will work, you can tap them on you know, a credit card scanner and it would just read it straight from your credit card. That's like NFC technology right there. And the cold card does have that, so that is pretty cool. And I have some other videos on the cold card and NFC if you wanna check that out. But anyway, moving on to native software. So the Treasure has good native software. Their tre Treasure Suite is actually really good and they have a lot of functions and stuff like that. So it's a good platform and a good piece of software. The Ledger, it's okay. You know, they have been adding more features and functions to it, but it's not the best software in the world to manage your Bitcoin transactions and Bitcoin wallets, but they are adding features to it all the time. So, you know, it's getting up there. The Keystone, I've not actually used their software before. Instead, I went with the Bitcoin only firmware and I connected that to Sparrow Wallet. So I use Sparrow Wallet for my Keystone transactions and also the cold card does not have any software of its own. Instead, I use Sparrow Wallet for it. And in fact, I use Sparrow Wallet for all the devices. I don't use Treasure Suite or the Ledger Suite either. I do all my Bitcoin transactions using Sparrow Wallet and that's because there's a lot of functions and features and privacy and all that type of stuff available within Sparrow Wallet. And I have a video on Sparrow Wallet if you're interested in learning more. But yeah, if you're interested in using the software that comes with the device, then I think Treasure beats out Ledger by a pretty good amount. Now for lack of better term, I just chose functions right here, but basically just some different features that devices have that I wanted to point out. So the treasure, ledger, and the keystone, they all have passphrases. So you can go ahead and set up passphrases which, with each of these devices. So that can give you another level of security on your wallet. If you don't know, a passphrase is basically the 25th word of your 24 word seed phrase. So it gives you another 100% customizable word in order to really secure here your Bitcoin. Now the cold card gets an A for this, these features or functions, and it supports passphrase. Like I said before, it also has NFC. You can also do dice. So, you know, when they're creating those seed phrases for you, like they're, th those are basically random number generators. And some technology is better than others at generating random numbers. And so cold card really, really takes this random number generation seriously. So when you're actually generating your seed phrase, you could bring it to like the real world and take a dice or a couple dice and roll them and get random numbers. And you can put those numbers into your cold card and it would increase the entropy or randomness of your seed phrase. And so they really put security first on the cold card, which is something that I really respect and admire. And none of the other three devices have that. Now they do have their own ways of creating entropy and coming up, coming up with random seed phrases. And they all have super secure chips and all that other type of stuff. So they're, they're doing a good job, but I just like how the cold card lets you bring it into the real world as well. And also they have other features like BIP85, which is something that I don't even quite understand yet. But the point is, since this is 100% Bitcoin focused, they go like the extra mile to ensure that it has all the functions and features that you could ever want if you're doing Bitcoin only transactions. And the next area I wanna address is accessibility. So the treasure has a fancy pin. And so basically when you're trying to enter a pin for your treasure, you have to use their software in order to enter the pin. And I've run into several issues with this. Like for some reason, sometimes things won't load correctly or it's lagging or something like that. And it can be kind of irritating. So this fancy pin setup that they have, while it might be a little bit more secure, it can cause issues and just kind of be a pain, which is one of the reasons why I put the treasure last is because that fancy pin, it's caused me headaches multiple times. And it's just something to be aware of. The ledger just has a standard pin, so that's nice. The keystone has a password, so you can do a 10 or more character password. You can do a fingerprint, you can do a pattern, which is kind of like a pin. So several different ways that you could go ahead and access your keystone device. And I really like that fingerprint, like it's super easy to do that. And that, that's something that I personally wish all devices had because it's super easy and useful. And of course, if your finger falls off or something like that, you could always fall back to a password or a pattern or something like that. So you, you have backup. Uh, the cold card offers a pin. So you can plug in your pin and you can access your cold card. 
And then finally, supports altcoins, which I've already talked about. So the Treasure, Ledger, and Keystone all support altcoins, whereas the Cold Card does not. So if you want to do stuff with altcoins, then don't go with the Cold Card. And that's pretty much it for this video. Again, I use all four devices. You can't go wrong with any of them. But if you're Bitcoin only and you really want to have the most functions and features, the Cold Card is the best option in my opinion. And hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And or please check out the btccourse.com. It's my passion project where I have lots of Bitcoin related training to help out fellow Bitcoin plebs. And that's it for this video. I hope you have a great rest of the day.